All right, hello and welcome to Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. How's it going? I'm going to do another whip and chat. <laughs> kind of on a bit of a roll today, and yeah, I'm on like midnight tomorrow, so I got to sleep during the day. So I'm going to sneak in another whip and chat here. We'll hang out again. It's all good. So craftably is Midnight Warrior by Sarah Burrier. Twenty inches by twenty-eight inches round drill. 62 colors in total, including two ABs, which stands for Aurora Borealis, and they're an iridescent coated type of drill that sparkles a little brighter than that of regular drills, and two rhinestones, uh, like two different colors, uh, translucent faceted tops with silver bottoms. So. Alright, how's it going? Yeah, finally got to an AB section, so we'll just keep diving right in here just taking breaks in between <laughs> plates and drills to just skip the whipping chats uploaded to YouTube and exported and uploaded so all right hopefully you're having a great day yeah just hanging out kind of my last day off for a couple of nights so I sleep during the day when I'm on nights so video is kind of falter when I'm on nights because I have to sleep on days that I work sleep during the day on days that I work nights so does that make sense <laughs> anybody confused yet <laughs> but it's fairly straightforward yeah and yeah sliding some ABs in here you seen blues and stuff for the night sky or yeah, a couple sections but yeah, the top row is going to be a lot of blues and stuff. Try to give you a really good heads up. Oh, excuse me. When uh, that kind of stuff... When, yeah, get the extensive color blocking with uh, just a couple of colors. So, it's a good heads up. Hopefully you know what's in a toolkit. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of just streamlined into what's in a diamond painting tool kit so in the previous whip and chat yeah I just meander into topics or stick around with a certain topic for certain videos or certain whip and chats or pretty quiet say something every once in a while to know that I'm alive in the half hour but yeah it varies Sometimes where I'm really chatty, and then other times I'm like, man, I'm here. <laughs> Let's get some drills on here. <laughs> on adhesive, that's the main goal. That goes a color here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Still sunny out. Uh, clouded over again. There was blue sky earlier. I hadn't seen blue sky in like a small chunk of time, like a couple of weeks. There were instances where we did get like sunlight here, but yeah, winter in southwestern Ontario here. Get a little tricky fish. Beautiful green grass one day, like, because get a warm spell and all the snow melts and then get like rain for a bit and then yeah winter can be very finicky and all just depends what's going on environmentally so kind of a cycle that the earth goes through El Nino maybe yeah that's a segment of it or it's just naturally uh, milder winters <clears throat> I don't know, it's meteorological stuff. Weather, which you'd probably have to go to school for just to be able to point out a green screen to say that it may or not, may not rain later in the week or something. <laughs> I don't against weather men or weather people, individuals, humans, weather humans, weather reporters, meteorologists. 
Yeah. That profession. <laughs> No, oh, sometimes you get a really good warning about a major storm system, which is important. Kind of interpreting a satellite image ahead of time and actually discerning what is going to happen when that precipitation or storm system or front, warm front, high pressure front, low pressure front, yeah, gotta kind of be able to elaborate what a huge green colored blob of cloud cover is going to do to a certain area of the world or over the United States or Canada. Most likely weather and weather reports everywhere around the world, but Yeah, I live in the southwestern Ontario region, surrounded by the Great Lakes, and so you either get walloped by snow or precipitation if the lakes aren't frozen over, or how does that work? Yeah, I think you get more precipitation, possibly, if the lakes aren't frozen over, but the Great Lakes, that is, oh, I could be wrong too. Really, it's systems from up north, the Arctic Circle kind of thing, and then that just kind of comes down during the winter because of the Earth's tilt and rotation cycle throughout the seasons. Yeah, it's, Earth's just a big <laughs> climate sphere thing in space, which has a, an atmosphere where humans and other life can survive. <laughs> Ozone layer. <laughs> Oh, the Great Lakes aren't completely frozen over yet. There's like a percentage that there is ice, but yeah, that's how we can get nasty snowstorms. I think that's how it works. If the water is exposed, then there can be evaporation and moisture collection in the air to form clouds, and then you get storms and stuff. And then it all depends on the atmospheric temperature and all that. I don't know, that's basic weather stuff, but <laughs> hope that helped. <laughs> what was he talking about? All right, let's, okay, percentage, work on her antlers or whatever these are. <laughs> Finally, a color other than blue, but glad I could sneak um, ABs in again. Yeah, for the crescent moon. Yeah, with a segment here in the canvas, in this part, this section. Okay, 59. Cool, cool, cool. All right, percent sign, finally. <laughs> it's like, uh, people probably want to see another color on this canvas than a blue. <laughs> Okay, 57. Yeah, let's go back a few DMC numbers here. There we go, 57. Yeah. It's a brown. Tweezers away again. This applicator pennant. <laughs> Just use tweezers for ABs. Aurora, Aurora Borealis. Yeah, those iridescent ones. Yeah. You can use regular wax, but. Yeah, it seems to wear the wax out because sometimes that iridescent coating comes off to the wax and you'll just be finding that you're picking up a drill and picking up a drill and picking up a drill. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, percent. Yeah, this is part of our antler. So I'll just start down here. Should be a 
quick fill in kind of thing. So yeah, hopefully your crafting projects or hobbies are going well. Always try to mention that. <laughs> Probably forgotten in a few weapon chats. It's, it happens. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just this like uh, branch or antlers of some kind. I really think it's like tree branches or something that she has in her headpiece here, so just kind of here and there. Alright, yeah, nothing there. Okay, then it like resumes further up the section here. Yeah, uh, I think it's just here, this brown. No, at least some variation in color, so that's good. Yeah, I can get pretty boring looking at the same color for a couple of whipping chats, but yeah. All depends on how big a color block is. And yeah, a color block is where you have the same symbol in a small area a large amount of a symbol in an area and confetti is kind of a mix of confetti this, but this is a color block here a percentage sign and you could call this confetti because there's like two or three one two three four five that's confetti where you have multiple symbols in a small area and you have to switch your DMC colors a little bit more or switch your colors a bit more than that of color blocking. So yeah, I just explain that every once in a while. Just kind of give you a visual just in case you might randomly say confetti or color blogging. That's kind of what those two terms mean in tandem. I think they're just generic we used across the board <laughs> for diamond painting. So. Confederate confetti generally refers to adding greater detail or leads to the addition of greater detail in a canvas or a section, so. And color blocking just, yeah. Just signifies a section that, yeah. It's just that color. So if you had like a landscape, like a, I don't know, a beachfront or something with like uh, buildings in the background, there would probably be a lot more confetti. So good comparison. And then color block, maybe if you're like uh, a logo or something or an emblem kind of thing might have a background to it so yeah there'd be color blocking in the background like a single color like 310 or something a black because I had that for the Hogwarts crest fine oddities Harry Potter all four um, Hogwarts uh, Divisions, yeah, houses, yeah, houses, there we go. Uh, let me see, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and 
Gryffindor, Slytherin, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw. There we go. <laughs> oh, Harry Potter fan here. <laughs> yeah, a decade ago. <laughs> yeah, I did a Hogwarts Crest find an oddities canvas for my nephew. And yeah, it was the Diamond Art Club one. So I don't know if that's still available. Like, uh, glad I got it. <laughs> my nephew likes it. So, well, hopefully. <laughs> I gave it to him uh, last year, Christmas last year. So, for Christmas last year. There we go. English. Yeah, I did it here on Aquas of Color on the channel. It was a whip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before this one, I believe. Yeah. Before uh, Midnight Warrior. Yeah. For Craftable here. Yeah, that sounds about right. Now, uh, be on the channel somewhere. <laughs> In my myriad of uh, videos. Mostly weapon chats, some unboxings in here. It's kind of like a preview of uh, my Diamond Art Club uh, canvases. Probably a little out of date now, like a stash kind of video. <laughs> I just showed like boxes, like the outside of the boxes of the kits. Diamond Art Club. Probably have a few more canvases than I did. And the recording of that video. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I'll do another stash one. <laughs> I think I'll update it. It kind of gives you an idea. I kind of show which canvases I receive if I do get a shipment while I'm doing a weapon jet or near the time where when I do a weapon jet. It's kind of grab the shipping box for Diamond Art Club or whatever diamond painting company it is and uh, yeah just show the box if I do you mention uh, grabbing a canvas so yeah just kind of what I do I don't do a lot of unboxings here on Echoes of Color I do like an unboxing if I were to uh, start a new whip, but I think for my Paint with Diamonds canvas that is coming up, it's going to show the canvas and uh, yeah, just jump right into it. It came bundled with uh, another canvas or something, so. And I think it's like bags anyway. Yeah, it's baggies for the drills, kind of like a, yeah. Midnight Warrior here. These are baggies for the Craft Blue Kit. So I think I'll just jump right into the Pan with Diamonds one. Yeah, nothing too formal there. I'll be an exception to how I usually introduce diamond painting kits. But, but the canvas after that, if it's like a whatever it will be, I'll show the whole kit. But yeah, pan with diamonds. Yeah. <laughs> Just been kind of on the border with doing it, but yeah, I yeah got in contact with the artist who actually like did it, created the picture, and yeah, let them know what was going on, got permission, and yeah, it's gonna do that as a whip and chat for a while until that canvas is done. get there oh yeah I'll I'll probably be a time where I do like a back-to-back -back diamond art club but canvases but see how it goes that really not planning too far ahead here <laughs> I'm getting too excited here so I want to think that far ahead 
Because you never know what's coming down the road kind of thing. All right, do this like up here. Okay, 58. Literally just like the next uh, number, color, number and order. <laughs> All right. Whoops, probably way more than I need, but that's sometimes better. Drill wise. All right, cool. All right, how are we doing? 20 minutes already? Wow. Done a couple whipping chats before this one, not today alone, but yeah, it's just the perfect opportunity to. Mom doesn't need the studio in this segment of time, so I'm jumping at the chance. Oh, excuse me. Been a bit since I've done like three whipping chats in a day, but I, I don't mind. I'm usually out here diamond pinning anyway or reading on the treadmill after I've done at least a whip and chat or so. So I'll probably never have a consistent uh, schedule for posting videos. Yeah, I don't want to do that to anybody. It's like, okay, where's your video? I'm supposed to post today. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to do that to people. I don't want to carve something into stone because you just never know what can happen these days so it is what it is so hopefully if you do subscribe and the notification bell thing i don't say this very often but you should get notifications from youtube if you do click on the bell and select all Sometimes or none. <laughs> I think if you don't click the bell, then you don't get notifications. But I don't. I just leave that up to anybody who's viewing. That's totally your discretion. <laughs> yeah, do what you desire. <laughs> totally up to you. Feel pressured to do so. <laughs> Just checking out the channel. Always appreciated. Just checking stuff out. There are tons of content on YouTube, so yeah. No, it's probably not possible to watch everything. Could get distracted by one video and just totally end up totally different rabbit hole. That's me with Pinterest sometimes when I do go on there. Yeah. Looking for one thing or inspiration for one thing or just for the giggles, comment on one picture and then you're looking at 16 other pictures or pieces of art, either digital or painted or drawn. Yeah, I can get stuck on Pinterest for probably more than an hour sometimes, but not a bad rabbit hole to fall down into unless you're trying to concentrate on something but I think I have Pinterest just out of curiosity or I just kept seeing kind of a caption that says from Pinterest or this picture or art is from posted on Pinterest or whatever and it was shared to Facebook or something so, yeah, that's how you can get entangled in uh, the social media web. Because you can comment and, like, even share the pictures or media on Pinterest to other social media outlets to spread the word or show somebody a favorite picture or piece of art. Etc. So, yeah, it's kind of a sharing platform for sure. We do express yourself. I think it's like a just a visual media platform, as far as I know. Not sure if there are like 
videos that play sound on that. Really just look for art. Yeah, it can get some pretty cool uh, cell phone backgrounds <laughs> on there. I've done that. <laughs> Yeah, it's just nice to change the phone background every now and again. <laughs> okay, there wasn't much to that 58. Yeah, I think it's just part of the, yeah, it's just part of the antler tree branch headdress thingy. So, there we go. All right, different colors. Uh, I'm glad I could do some ABs. I like doing that. So there's an opportunity to do so. All right, uh, reverse arrow. Uh, where's that? Uh, 13. All right. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, it's Makes color blocking here. Number 13. Not too much of those 13 left, but. Eh, it's just. Yeah, it's like a, in the gray family. Purplish gray, maybe. <laughs> it's fun trying to describe colors. So it's just like DMC numbers and then, yeah. The. Numerical order, chronological order that is listed in the legend. <laughs> All right, so reverse arrow, right? Yep. Okay, I still think it's like part of this. Uh, these twigs here, these branches. Yeah, I'll start down here. Yeah, it's just here and there. A detail, uh, probably shadowing or distance. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. There we go. Yep. It's a nice little first arrow here. I think I'll uh, go on the treadmill and read uh, tonight. Yeah, I'm still reading the second uh, Wheel of Time book, The Great Hunt, by Robert Jordan. Over the halfway point. Look at that book. Yeah, I'm probably thinking I should go back to The Expanse, book five out of nine. Close back there on the treadmill. I'm like, have 700 kilometers left in the uh, Eye of Sauron challenge, part four of the Conquer challenge. So I just added more days. The challenge just has a comfortable buffer. I think I'll be done it half decently way before the time that I, I added a couple more weeks to the challenge duration but yeah it's just something I just naturally do every day I have the phone and it's on in my pocket tracks my steps and it translates into a distance and I can earn medals in these Lord of the Rings challenges, and I'm doing a Pacer challenge as well, and a Cross Canada one, but I mentioned Pacer and Conqueror, because the Cross Country uh, Canada one was like kind of a registration period, which is now like closed. Participants are just completing the 
8,000 kilometer track across Canada from uh, east to west. So that's a team one that the Lord of the Rings and the Silk Road trading route in Asia are just myself independent. Thousands of other people have done or are doing these challenges themselves as well, but it's like an independent effort. The Canada, cross Canada one is a team. But the Great Canadian Run or something. But anyway, you've been watching Echoes of Color with Jeffrey Morrison. Down below in the description, I put my Facebook profile page, Echoes of Color Facebook business page, and my Instagram. All three, just kind of section completion updates, that kind of thing. Every once in a while, I don't post all the time, kind of thing. And yeah, I just mentioned Conqueror, Pacer, those main website links are down below. However, I'm not affiliated, nor will I receive a commission if you purchase any of the challenges or do any of that. Totally up to you, just thing I do on the side. I purchase the challenges myself, yeah. It, they're just there for information. But otherwise, take care. All the best, always a pleasure to hang out. All the best with your crafting endeavors and hobbies. And uh, yeah, see you around. Take care. <laughs>